Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Felsbrun Farm for a very damp, miserable start to the day. And I have to say, I am a little disappointed. It's raining, and it's raining inside. This is supposed to be something that was fixed. And while inside this building, it's better. We come into the corridor, and it does occasionally rain through in the corridor. It's a bit of an improvement in here, but it's not perfect. If we come over to our shelters, no improvement whatsoever. It still rains through the roof. And it still rains inside the vehicles as well. So, yeah. All the great big bluster from Giants. That, yes, we have fixed it. It no longer rains inside. Turns out that that is absolutely not the case. Very disappointing. However, we do have automatic wipers, as you can see, as I turn the engine on. Our wipers, front and back, both come on automatically in the weather. So, I mean, that's a nice touch. It's just still getting wet inside a closed tractor, which shouldn't be happening. Nah, <sighs> never mind. Right, let's turn plant growth off so our crops don't die uh, today. Let's check and see what growth stage they're at. First stage, okay, so that's okay. We are going to be running the harvester uh, with uh, a worker to get this harvesting underway. We are going to be working over here on field three while that's happening. Uh, we're going to be uh, plowing this field and also trying to just extend it ever so slightly around here. And you can see that the sawmill's flashing. We do still seem to have that great demand for wood chips. Let's see if the price is any better. Oh, no, that price has fallen quite dramatically. That was over 200, just yesterday i think it was 203 when the demand was on or 206 something like that it's now 132 that's pretty bad and let's take a look at soybean prices as well uh we have two prices currently on the increase that's reassuring to see as well that means that we can hopefully get quite a good bit of cash for our uh, for our soybean crop let's get the combine up and running caught on the uh, frame there. Yeah. You see the uh, combine is wedged open. Uh, as we know with uh, some of these glitches, sometimes they they don't work, you know, things don't work that should work. and Sometimes they'll clear themselves with a reset, sometimes they won't. Uh, as was the case with this combine here and with my chickens game definitely does have a few issues maybe when we get a patch it'll uh, sort out the rain coming through uh, which supposedly was already fixed anyway maybe that'll be part of an update patch and we will finally stop getting rain inside buildings and vehicles which would be nice even in this combine I'm still getting wet not quite so much but it is still raining. I just saw some rain flash past my head there. Uh, so, yeah, it's it needs work. This uh, supposed fix uh, is still an issue. Oh, and I've just realised it's raining, so we're not going to be able to harvest. If we try and do that, look, see? Do not harvest during rain or hail. And she says harvest now. It used to say thresh, if you remember. So we'll leave that set up there. That'll obviously have to be done a little bit later on. Uh, instead, we're just going to go straight to ploughing. Uh, now, I want a slightly more heavy-duty uh, wheel setup than skinnies for this. Oops. Still got a little bit of cash left over from yesterday, as you can see. Uh, 6,900. Our uh, interest payment was a lot higher again overnight than it has been recently. Seems we took all of our money out. Let's also repair our uh, tractor get it up to full operating power and let's take a look at the wheel options so we can go rear twins uh, full twins standards standards with weights wides or wides with weights that's my preferred setup the wides with weights uh, i want to run rear twins for this so let's customize there we go And let's hook up to the plough we brought back yesterday. Avoid crashing into the uh, trailer. I 
once again our lovely metallic paint job just looks stunning in the sunlight there we go so let's make our way over to our new plot of land let's fold the plough up so it doesn't stick out wildly behind us it brings it in a bit more Let's see just how much we can actually add to our new plot of land. That's going to be quite a nice little area for trees along there as well, I think, going forward. So here's the start of the field. We zoom out, we'll see it better. There we go. So what I'm going to do to get us started is just unfold and then turn the plough. is uh, just run this edge here just to give me uh, uh, a clean line as to where the field currently ends and then we'll look at the uh, sort of terrain smoothness as we move along here just make sure this is going to be suitable for expansion it looks good potentially space for a shed or something over here as well for when we do expand over here although I'm thinking most of the expansion will be done over towards the house and over there the other side of the river that terrain does look pretty good Okay, so that looks to be the edge. Let's get the lights on as well, just to help. That's the edge of our field there. I'll turn the plough again. I'm going to do the same over here. Just on this little strip here. Just put the actual edge in. There's a guideline. Like that. If I line up about here, like so, I don't want to be right to the very edge of the field, not yet. I might drop that in and allow create fields. We just drag this up a little bit. We want to go to about there, I think. Just take it all the way across to there. Do the same again. And you can see this is actually quite a substantial extra chunk that we're going to be carving on the side of the field here. And there's nothing to stop us from actually curving it around a little bit as well so that we can get closer to the road as the road curves away. And drag this up a bit more. Like that. There we go. Do that one more time. So that when we turn the plough and go along the top, we've got enough space to drop the plough where we want it without creating uh, a weird little offshoot to the side. There we go. So, same again when it comes to doing our ploughing here. Uh, I'm going to drop just inside where I want the, uh, the area to start. And I can then tidy that up with another pass a little bit later. So we drop that down here. And I want to try and stay in as straight a line as possible. because I want my field edges to be clean and sharp. Any tinkering that we do can be done at a later point. I'm just trying to point ever so slightly back towards the field. 
I mean, look at all this extra space here, look, as the road moves away from us, that we, we could also exploit. There's definitely potential to expand our field a bit. And I want to stop about here. Turn the plough. Turn off create fields. Because I don't want to dirty up this edge of the field just, just yet. We may go a little bit closer to the road. But for now... I just want to get that clean line there. Like that. The light's back on again. Let's uh, allow Create Fields to drop the plough. And start dragging this up. Very carefully. Like that. Let's try and do the same again just here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the furrows that I'm creating as a guideline so I can stay in a straight line. need to step out just a touch more. Just go back a bit. I'm trying to be precise here. It's a little tricky. Uh, this is why I can't wait for uh, a straight uh, a straight plow in the style of sort of like the culty plow things. Uh, that we got uh, from Lemkin last time. They will make cutting fields a lot easier. Or at least cutting square edges on fields a lot easier. I'm trying to be careful not to step outside of my boundary area. There we go. We've got a nice clean edge along there. We need obviously need to work on the top bit. But for now, what I'm going to do is just thicken up this part of the border here and then we'll start carving out this expansion going across the field. And once that's done, we can then kind of finalise our edge a little bit. So one more pass, just to give me that little bit of wiggle room. go and now I can start filling in this bit here as I say we can actually tidy the actual border up a little bit later uh, once this section has been carved and then we can even look at as I say uh, stretching the field out closer to the road at this end of the field as well uh, so that we've got a little bit more workable ground There we go. So, I'll carry on doing this, and I'll see you when I've made uh, a bit more progress with our ploughing. There we go. Uh, a nice little extra strip of land on the side of our newly acquired field here. This will certainly bring in uh, a bit of extra cash when we plant on here, but I do think we can go a little bit closer to the uh, to the roads at this end of the field. We're giving up a fair bit of space, and I'm, I also think we could possibly do it on this side of the field as well, although that will be kind of decided upon once the rest of the field's all been ploughed up. So 
what I need to do now is uh, put a clean-ish edge along here. This is going to be a little bit trickier. Let's, uh, again, kind of stick inside our border. Let's bring that up to here. There we go. And this gives me the space to then tidy the field shape up again at the end, once we're done. This will be an extra pass or two with the combine along uh, a good chunk of the field here. zoom out a bit so I can see what I'm doing here and drop the plow down try and keep the line nice and straight where I can and we're going to very gradually now start to drift inside as well that and then this will make it nice and easy for us to then just make it wider as we need to as we go along here of course this will make it a little bit trickier for fertilizing and uh, also for uh, lime etc but once it's done we will have uh, a nice little extra bit of field turn the plow and uh, do the same going back this way and when I was talking uh, a couple of episodes ago about my idea of having uh, a map that just had land and you had to create your own fields. This is the kind of thing I was talking about where you just buy a plot of land and and we can kind of simulate that in, in some respects because there's grass on this field and, and not like a, a, a pre-cut field that's ready to be sort of just planted. Um, and technically, I suppose the grass is there. But the way we're shaping uh, the new boundaries of this field, this is the kind of thing I was talking about, but for the entire plot of land rather than just putting an extension on an existing field actually have uh, no field at all and just the plot of land and it's up to us how we carve and create the fields on that plot once we bought it that to me is uh, an idea that I find incredibly appealing I don't know how well it would actually work in the long term but it's something I would love to try I think that would be good because that's essentially how it is in real life there are no kind of pre-cut fields in, in 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 the main respect like this you know in in real world farming it is just a big piece of land and uh you know the farmers decide how they want to how much of it they want to actually churn up and what they want to plow up and cultivate and seed and how much of a border around the edge of the field they want to leave um all that kind of stuff you know and all that's kind of taken away and and done for us in the game and uh, this gives us an opportunity to kind of just add that extra little layer of realism into our gameplay by uh, creating these extensions like this so it'd be nice to maybe have an entire map where it was just like this if we you know once we bought the land we had to completely create the fields from scratch no pre-cut field that we just come along and extend slightly just uh, a big slab of grass for us 
to come in with a plow and create the field on and then we have a basic shape for us to choose you know what we do with really would like to see that at some point during farming sim 19 uh, so I, I can only hope that uh, uh, a map maker will give us that kind of blank slate type of map going forward especially with the new placeable kind of system which needs some work but with the, the system that we have in place now for placeables and the fact that we can create a farm completely from scratch you know we don't have to have a pre-built farm on a map anymore we just need to have access to placeables and then it's entirely up to us where we stick our farm and how we create it and what size it's going to be whether or not we have animals you know map makers are not necessarily going to be bound to the same constraints that they have been in the past where they have to have a farm uh, of some kind and they have to have animal pens on the maps and uh, they have to have you know contracts and stuff programmed in you know i think a small map the size of altenstein maybe something like that with no contracting available just small plots of land for us to go in and create our own fields and farm and yeah i would really love to see that you know put into practice who knows it could become the new way for maps to be made going forward right there we go that's our little extension over here kind of carved so uh, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to turn off the need to create plow uh, the the ability to create fields uh, and i'm going to hire a worker to just plow the rest of this field out for us you put the base edge along here There we go. Uh, I will probably take this a bit closer to the road as well. We don't have to worry about traffic up here. We are the only ones that use this section of road, so we can go a little bit closer uh, and not worry about things. Although there might be the odd signpost that I'll clatter out of the way, as I often do. Um, but yeah, I'll get the rest of this field kind of cut and ploughed like this, and then we'll look at maybe extending a little bit more. And hopefully, you know, a little bit later, the rain will stop. Uh, and we can get a start on our soybean harvest. So I will see you in a little while. So while our worker is busy, uh, I have uh, just fitted some Nokian tyres, some wet weather tyres to our tractor, some road tyres, because we're going to go and do uh, a couple of quick transport jobs. There's not a lot available in contracting at the moment. They're almost all harvesting jobs. Uh, and of course, we can't take any of those on because it's raining. If we could do harvesting jobs, we'd actually be doing our own harvest right now. Still, this gives us a chance to kind of go and drive around a bit in the wet weather uh, and also try out these new Nokians. These are actually free, you didn't have to pay for these, uh, I guess, because they were cheaper than the tyre options I'd already paid for. So where are we going? Uh, the village sawmill. Now, is that our sawmill or is that the one down by the port? Uh, it's the one down actually just behind the, uh, the petrol station. Uh, not the petrol station, the supermarket by the look of it. So... Uh, Let's get some lights on and our beacon and off we go to transport some pallets. All right, so there is our pallet. Oops. And where are we taking this? Uh, Port Northwest. Okay, that's a nice straightforward drive. Let's make our way out the back here. I 
have to say, I do, I do like these automatic wipers. They do just add that extra little touch. There we go. Yeah, they do just add to the atmosphere when you're driving in first person, having the wipers swooshing across the screen like that. Across the windscreen. Yeah, it really does just add that little bit more personality to the vehicle. A little bit more immersion. A little bit more sense of realism. I just wish I didn't get the occasional bit of rain going through the ceiling. <laughs> that would be nice. It's not as bad as it used to be. Uh... That is a definite factor, but yeah, slightly disappointed about the rain effects. It still doesn't look all that good, does it? As a as a visual, the rain it still looks a little bit. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I suppose rain is quite tricky to to model without really putting in a lot of processing power. I mean, I think it would be great if we could get maybe. Uh, a bit of a sheen on the road to kind of indicate that it's wet and damp uh, it just looks exactly the same it's just uh, slightly grayer skies and little blobs floating around in front of us that's the only real difference if we could actually see sort of uh, damp concrete damp roads uh, or the road just got a little bit darker in, in its colour to indicate that you know it had soaked up some of that moisture just hit something like that. I think that would be uh, another really big step forward in terms of, you know, the realism factor and the immersion factor. Uh, maybe it's just wishful thinking. Maybe it's something that'll be on the to-do list for 21. Who knows? Not too far away from our destination now. Uh, there's one other transport job. Uh, and then beyond that, I don't think there's anything else we can take on. It's all harvesting. I mean, we, I suppose we could do a beat contract like that. Uh, you know, you can harvest beets and potatoes in the rain. So we could possibly take on a, a spud contract. But I don't really want to spend that much time away from the farm. It's guaranteed the rain will, will stop by the time we get into the contract and then we'll have to wait and wait and wait and I want to get our own harvest done so I'm just looking for short-ish jobs that we can knock out reasonably quickly not too bothered if they don't pay out amazingly just need to kind of cover the wage costs of the uh, of the worker who is running our New Holland at the moment doing the plowing for us that's costing us a, a little bit of cash go so let's cash this one in I got all excited because I saw the new Agco and I'm like oh I might want to do that and then I realized it's raining we can't do that contract <laughs> never mind uh, what else is there those three sewing jobs are still there uh, we're just going to take this contract here this is probably going to be a double pallet situation uh, so which gas station are we going from uh, the one over by the grain mill, the bottom of the ramp leading to our farm. So let's negotiate my way through here without ripping out all the signs if I can. There we go. Uh, off we go to the uh, the gas station ah so the uh, the sky is brightening up a little bit my windshield wipers have just turned themselves off and if you look at the uh, the radar up by the clock in the top right corner uh, we have clouds so the rain I'm guessing is going to start transitioning out in a moment so we should maybe start to see a break in the cloud cover as well 
let's, uh, let's zoom out a bit and try and pan around. It's still pretty overcast, as you can see. I'm surprised it is still raining, actually. I would have thought it would have stopped by now. Whiz our way through the traffic here. There's quite a few bits of wood down here that we could scavenge. See them all lying on the uh, on the forest floor through there. There's a lot of bits of dead wood in there. Might have to come back and uh, clear that area out at some point. There's that big pile of straw still, still there. Oh, look at that! There's a little break in the clouds just in front of us. Just starting to see little patches popping up. Oh, that sign was that me? Might have been me. Uh, it was there already, but it means that it could well have been from an earlier uh, from an earlier day. Uh, and there we go. Look, we've got two pallets. So let's uh, try and push those together a bit. There we go. Still raining, look. Takes a while for this rain to end, by the look of it. I'm amazed at that. <sighs> Damn it. So I can nudge this one on a bit. Uh, no. Ah, <laughs> just destroying someone's uh, suitcases there. Crushing up their underwear and shirts and trousers and stuff. Let's try this again. I have to nudge this on. There we go. That's better. Right, off to the hotel. And a little bit of drama with the pallets <laughs> as we climbed up the hill, but I have got them both back on. And here we are arriving. So it's taken a little while longer than it should have done to actually get here. Oh, and look at that. The rain has finally stopped. I was just thinking to myself, how come has it still not stopped raining yet? And it has finally just, just finished raining. Just a few little spots. So let's sit and watch the clouds for a second. And there you can see the occasional spot of rain. And we are starting to get some gaps in the cloud cover. Alright, let's take on another transport job while we're waiting. So we're going from carpentry to supermarket. This is actually a, a reasonably short job. I think. Carpentry over by the Grain Elevator East, uh, then uh, the supermarket uh, just to the uh, the left of the fuel stop and spinnery in the village. So it shouldn't take us too long to get this one done. Uh, and let's try and keep an eye on the clouds as we're doing this. See if we see any major changes in the cloud cover. See if we can watch it rolling away perhaps. It is still, you know, forecast as cloudy, so I guess we're not going to see the clouds rolling out all that often. We might just see a few breaks in the cloud appearing. We've got a little one right up in front of us. 
just there. So we'll keep an eye out, see if we see any more of those start to appear. See that cloud cover perhaps lessen a little bit. Definitely starting to see a few more breaks in the cloud. If I just jump out for a second there, you can see... We're getting some movement in the clouds now, and you can see this area opening up around here. That's kind of cool to actually see. Oh, look, our workers just finished ploughing. You can actually see that cloud cover starting to break up. That's actually a really nice visual. Watching the clouds break apart like that. You see little thin bits breaking over on the far sides over there as well. Thinning out a little bit there perhaps, but yeah, look at this as it moves overhead and those gaps change as the clouds actually start rolling. That is actually a very impressive visual. Another break in the clouds just there as well. It's kind of spreading a little bit as it moves overhead. It does have this weird kind of blurry look though, as though you know, someone smeared some Vaseline on the lens or something. <laughs> You've got these wonderful sharp crisp visuals over here. Like this tree, and I mean, how, how sharp does everything look there? It looks really clean and crisp and beautiful, and then you scroll up and it's just a blur fest. But obviously, it makes sense. I mean, it's a long way away. You wouldn't see, you know, this in amazing, sharp, high def kind of quality of visuals. It's a really nice kind of effect of the clouds just rolling and breaking apart like that, though. I do like that. Anyway. Uh, on with the contract, we have a delivery to make, and once that's done, we can head back to the farm and pick up where we left, left off with cleaning up our new ploughed field. Plus, we can also start to get ready to get our harvest underway. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to actually get the combine switched on by the time we get back to the farm. Oh, our flickery dashboard is back. It's got to be a lighting visual that's causing it. Ah, I've just missed my turn off. Ah, all right, let's uh, let's cut through here. Oh no, wait, it's the next roundabout, isn't it? Not that one. All right, okay, we're on the lower part here. There we go. This will take us where we need to go. There's our supermarket, just the other side of these buildings. And there we go. The sun is definitely coming back out through the clouds now. You can see the change in lights. Speaking of which, we can turn our headlights off. There we go. Uh, complete the contract for a little bit of cash uh, and now we'll head back make sure that our own harvest can get started and uh, finish sorting out that ploughing Okay, so let's try this again. Let's see if we can get the harvester up and running. Yes, we can. Fantastic stuff. It is now dry enough. So we'll get our harvest started. You can see a lot more breaks in the clouds. It's starting to fade and melt away now, which is good to see, although... Uh, it is half past three, so the light is uh, only going to be with us for a couple of hours before it disappears altogether. Uh, we'll get this combine 
uh, turned around and onto the opposite side of the field at the other end so that we're not going to run the risk of hitting the trees and then kind of work back to this side uh, and then we'll uh, jump into the new Holland and just finish cleaning up the field there's a little bit that needs to kind of be done uh, in terms of cleaning up the edges and a few little tufts of grass that we missed that need to be cleared away as well uh, we are going to have to lime the field and we just don't have the cash to be able to do that yet hopefully we might be able to sell have the prices started dipping uh, well they're not bad Port South East isn't a great price uh, the grain elevator east 1623 that's not bad for soybean just there but hmm we know we can do better I mean we had nearly 1800 last time we sold so I'd be inclined to possibly just hang on to our soybean we've got the extra land uh, we can always supplement our income with a little bit of either scavenging or contracting there's no immediate need for us to sell straight away now that we have this land obviously the quicker we can get the debt reduced again uh, the less our interest payments are going to be which means you know the less money we'll lose every day but it's not uh, it's not an essential you know urgent matter anymore now that we have the new field we can kind of ease off a little bit I was hoping we could maybe sell this soybean today, but I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to wait until we get a, a more favourable price. So if that means we have to go back to doing more contracting and spraying and stuff to be able to bring in, um, at least on lease, uh, a, uh, a lime spreader so that we can treat uh, our new field uh, before we plant it, then so be it, you know. That's, that's preferable to just not treating the field at all. There we go. Right. Worker is off and running. And we have a little bit of work to do over here. There we go. So you can see we do have these tufts here. Uh, I think create field should be turned off, but we'll check. It is. Good. I am wondering whether or not I can potentially gain an extra couple of rows along the bottom of the field there. I don't really want to risk it too much. And we could possibly get an extra couple of rows on this side of the field as well. I'm not sure if I want to go ahead and do that yet. Still umming and ahhing on that one. You see our plough speed is only 4 miles an hour. There is something wrong with the ploughing, I think. I mean, this plough, you can see, uh, we've pretty much wrecked it. Okay, that's weird. Well, that was a little bit weird. <laughs> uh, Spotify just tried to launch for some reason. Uh, and I don't think it was on the console. I think it was on the TV, which is even weirder because I didn't switch it on. And my Bluetooth on my TV is turned off as well. So I'm not quite sure how that happened. Uh, very, very weird. So sorry about that. Yeah, there we go. We've got these edges kind of cleaned up a little bit. I need to do the same on the opposite side. Uh, I need to clean this side edge up and I need to clean that top edge up a, a little bit as well. Uh, I don't think we're going to get too much more on this field, but it is a pretty big sized field now. You can see it's, it's pretty wide and uh, it's got some good size to it. I think we'll definitely get quite a good volume of crop off this, depending on, you know, not even depending on whatever we plant, you know, whatever we plant on here. We're going to get a pretty good return, I think. Uh, but as I was trying to say, uh, you can see the plough here. Um, we've absolutely wrecked it. Ripped all the paint off there. Uh, back to the bare metal. This thing will be absolutely wrecked. Uh, I don't know if we can actually repair leased equipment. 
we'll have to try that. Because uh, last time we repaired the plough, we actually owned it. Uh, and it allowed us to fix it. And that will improve ploughing speed. This one, you know, it's leased. So if it is absolutely trashed, which I know it will be, because I can see from the damage to the... Uh, the mold boards there we can see that all the paint's been ripped off them uh, this thing has been worn out effectively and I don't know whether or not we can fix it It'd be interesting to try that right let's clean this line up just a touch get my uh, tractor lined up on that uh, furrow just there, let's lower plough allow create fields that drifted again drifted inside this is the harder thing with uh, the, all the, let's say the harder thing, this is the trouble with ground response is that when you're trying to do things like this with precision ploughing, uh, it's very easy to get bounced off the line that you are running which makes you know, precision bordering like this a, a fair bit tougher. You should get knocked offline really easily. I took it just a touch too far there. Never mind. Uh, get away with that because I do need to clean the edge up on this side. So again, try and get lined up. Trying to be really careful here. go. Uh, so you can see we are slightly short on this little pass there, but that's okay. Can get away with that. Uh, what are we looking like cleanliness wise over here? That's all looking okay. This bit definitely needs to be tidied. And I think I'm just going to leave the length of the field this side. Yeah, we'll leave it as is. It's it's big enough, I think. We've we've extended it enough. So we'll just tidy up this edge. We won't add extra uh, to the left of us. We'll stay as we are. Drop that down. Carefully drag forward. A little patch here in the corner. There we go. So our field is done. Uh, if we take a look at our field settings here, there is our field. Much, much bigger than it was before. So we can definitely get uh, some really good return from our planting on here. Do need to get that limed. That's going to have to happen tomorrow. Uh, we need to go and do some contracting to earn enough money to lease the lime spreader, first of all, and then also the lime to go in it. Uh, I'm going to continue working away on the harvest. And this will be where we pick up sort of next time out. So... Uh, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob and I'll be back with some more Fellsbrunn Farm very soon.